From Sunny News, new species of Triassic archosauriform discovered in Brazil. From prehistoric to present, my name is Ethan. This is Creature Guy Live Daily News. Remember to like, comment, and if you love talking about animals, share this show with everyone you know. You can catch new episodes throughout the day at Creature Guy Live on Rumble and YouTube. Now, let's get into the animal news of the day. So a new genus and species of Pro Proterocampsid archosauriform has been identified from an almost complete fossilized hind limb found in southern Brazil. So the proterocampsids are a lineage of um, not necessarily true archosaurs. Um, this belongs to a completely different branch of reptile that first evolved somewhere around 242 million years ago in the early Triassic, and then ended up going extinct towards right before the Triassic extinction, so around 206 million years ago. And um, many of these had very distinct crocodilomorph-like um, structures. So um, there have been different um, species in different continents have been discovered of the um, proto proterocampsids. So animals like Rhydinosuchus, um, and these animals had a very similar jaw structure. In some cases, they were much thinner than what they're showing in this image. So it's possible they had a bit of a semi-aquatic sort of lifestyle like modern day crocodiles or even caimans. But uh, many of them were not very large, um, some of them only being about three to four feet in length. But um, there have been many species that have been found different Triassic formations. The ret Oh boy. Red Eye Mighty Kempsa. There we go. Becororum roamed our planet during the late Triassic epoch some 237 million years ago. I uh, wonder if this animal was found in the Santa Maria formation of southeastern Brazil, which has fossils dating to somewhere between 243 to 235 million years ago. So um, no, actually, uh, a bit later, I might be um, underestimating that, probably to around 229 million years ago, because there are different species of the first, some of the earliest dinosaurs that have been discovered within the Santa Maria formation. Uh, let's see. The ancient reptile was a member of Proterocampsidae. So there have been like at least 12 different species of this lineage that have been discovered. A large group of carnivorous archosaur forms that were endemic to South America. They had dermal armor and long crocodile-like skull, most likely filled in an ecological niche similar to modern crocodiles. The Triassic period witnessed the emergence and extinction of numerous groups of reptiles, including the Proterocampsidae, said Dr. Rodrigo Mueller. Mueller. Um, although this clade was previously considered endemic to South America, Recent phylogenetic investigations indicate a broader geographical distribution. So you also had, um, let's say this is the Santa Maria Formation, um, different members of the Idiosauridae lineage of reptiles. So um, this is a descendant of the Archosauromorphs. This is Idiosaurides, a much smaller species of Dismatosuchian, possibly an insectivore. Many of these reptiles. Um, consisted of a distinct pointed nose structure, solid bone, possibly used for digging up like different types of insects, um, probably not eating like the small mammals in the region or uh, maybe even reptiles or amphibians. Um, probably many cases, insectivores and some other instances, they might have been herbivorous, like the more famous Dismatosuchus. And um, these animals were also quite well armored. These are not closely related to like the later um, Jurassic and Cretaceous ankylosaurs or nodosaurs. These were their own distinct group of reptiles and um, ended up going, at, going extinct at the end of the Triassic around 201 million years ago. Dismatosuchus was one of the largest species and consisted of these elongated spikes. Though there is debate on how formidable those spikes might have been. Some say that they might have been quite fragile, whereas most of the protection outside of the armor along its body would have been by the tail. And the spikes might have just been used for display structures. 
Um, the animal on top of it is a Rausukian, so most likely the um, more famous Postosuchus that has been found in different areas of Arizona, Texas. So this was a bit later, though. These animals are not found in the Santa Maria Formation. They are found in different American formations dating to around 220 million years ago. So um, another, okay, this is, I think it's just another uh, face of asteroides. Um, they didn't, asteroides, this specific species of idosaur, did not have the distinct spikes of Dismatosuchus, but did possess a very pointed like snout, maybe even for digging up roots. Uh, there were dinosaurs that came a bit later um, during the Triassic. So this is a member of the Herrerasaurid family, which has been found in the Santa Maria Formation. This is Stericosaurus. Stericosaurus was like a medium-sized species of Herrerasaur. This animal was around seven feet in length and possibly weighed somewhere around 60 pounds. So um, probably going after different smaller species of dinosaur within the area, different smaller species of crocodilomorphs, amphibians, and reptiles. In fact, there were some larger amphibians at this time, too. But Styricosaurus also possibly had um, five distinct digits on its forelimbs, despite it being a theropod. Some of the earlier theropods, even going into the Jurassic, had many more digits than what you find on most Cretaceous theropods. However, only three were clawed, kind of like with what you see on distinct um, later species of herbivorous dinosaurs. Let's see. The oldest known uh, proterocamsids have been found in the Labidian, Labidian Lower Carnian deposits of Argentina and Brazil, whereas the most recent records come from the Upper Carnian, Lower Norian, the same region. Hmm, interesting. So we're finding them in different time um, segments of um different formations of argentina and brazil because i'm just talking about the santa maria formation in brazil a wide variety of different types of also um, platyosaur morphs have been found here as well so this is a distant relative of the more famous platyosaurus which would appear later in time this is um Bwag bagwallosaurus a much smaller platyosaur morph bagwallosaurus was probably about four feet in length, it might have weighed 20 to 30 pounds, about the size of Velociraptor in some cases, uh, but it was probably primarily herbivorous. Now, um, this is showing these platyosaur morphs having the ability to walk on all fours. Many more species of platyosaur morph look like they were strictly bipedal. Um, they were primarily plant eaters, but many did not have the capability of supporting their weight on all fours. It, simply, it simply would have crushed their forelimbs. This is a distinct species of mammal. There have been other mammal species that have been discovered within the Santa Maria Formation. As for this um, extinct clade of reptiles, I do not know. But these are distinct cynodonts in the background, possibly relatives of... No, not you. Not you. Where are you? There we go. Okay, so this is Ischigualestia. So this is also relative to the more famous Placerius from North America, but there have been over like 12 different species, uh, possibly more, of the Dicynodonts that have been discovered here in um, the Santa Maria Formation. Let's see, where were we? Okay, um, so this is a close relative. Some of these individuals easily weighed over 1,500 pounds in some way. Um, up to a couple of tons. There have been different specimens that have been found, um, different Triassic dicyndonts in Poland, South Africa, Tanzania, and um, even Brazil hosted some large species, probably hunted by different types of crocodilomorphs in the region, not so much the carnivorous dinosaurs. Um, theropod dinosaurs weren't really, they did not become very large during this time. An 800 pound Triassic theropod dinosaur was one of the largest that existed during the Triassic. Once the, Dra the Jurassic emerged, immediately there was a massive um, increase in size for theropod dinosaurs. Let's see, was there anybody else? Uh, I'll get to them shortly.
So back to this individual, phylogenetic analysis place proterocampsidae. So we're focusing on the crocodilomorphs, not crocodilomorphs, uh, crocodilomorph-like archosauromorphs. Within proterocampsia, a clade of archosauroforms as a sister group to archosauria. Um, yes, so archosauria. That is where animals such as dinosaurs, birds, true crocodiles, um, caimans, alligators derive from. Pterosaurs. Because of its affinities, the clade is particularly important for understanding the early evolution of archosaurs, he added. In addition, proterocampsids evolved a relatively diverse array of body plans with some forms exhibiting putative um, semi-aquatic adaptations, whereas others were adapted to a terrestrial lifestyle. You know, the one in, or at least, here, let's see. The holotype fossil of Red Eye Mecampsa Becorum was excavated at the Lina Varzia II Becker site of the Santa Maria formation in the um, uh, municipality of a of Cariso do Sul, Rio Grande do Sul, Brazil. The specimen consists of an almost complete and articulate hind limb, making it one of the few specimens with these bones preserved from Brazil. Hmm, well, that's nice to know. Um, uh, another thing is that, uh, no, let's keep going. The specimen consists of an almost complete and articulated hind limb, making it one of the few specimens with these bones preserved from Brazil. Also, when looking at the um, red eye, red eye mecampsa, is that this animal was probably feeding on a wide variety of different types of fish, might have gone after amphibians. Um, the smaller species were probably not even going after the different smaller species of dinosaur at this time, um, crocodilomorphs, even um, the dicynodonts or the proto-mammals, which are what the dicynodonts are, cynodonts in general, that existed um, during this time. Now, um, proto-mammal, so these are the closest extinct relatives to the true mammals that existed during the Triassic. Proto mammals that go back into the Permian over 270 million years ago, like the more famous Gorgonopsians of the Permian, the ancient saber tooths um, were, well, technically even earlier synapsids um, were the closest relatives to um, mammals that evolved during the Triassic period. So true mammals probably, at least at the moment, looks like they appeared somewhere around quite possibly 235 million years ago with the first dinosaurs. It's still a debate with the earliest dinosaurs too, because we keep finding more um, dinosaur species or, or uh, at least dinosaur-like species earlier in the Triassic, along with other types of mammals, pterosaurs. So they could have lived at least 10 to 15 million years earlier than previously thought. Now, um, I mixed up cyanodonts with dicyanodonts. Technically, not the same thing. Uh, dicyanodonts are, I mean, cyanodonts are a bit more closer to modern mammals than necessarily the dicyanodonts are. So I'm not sure why they're showing the elephants and the platypus here. Maybe it's due to the massive uh, order that everyone belongs to. But these are all members of the cyanognathidae lineage of proto mammals. Um, there was some speculation as to whether or not certain ones would have been venomous, but at the moment, there isn't really any proof to show that any of these carnivores would have been venomous. Many of them were quite small, in some cases the size of like a large shrew. Other animals were about the size of a cat, especially when looking at um, Sinochnathus. It was a bit larger. Many of these animals were burrowers. They have been preserved in burrows and were probably covered in a dense layer of fur, despite them not being true mammals. So this is the Permian Sinognathus. It existed right before the Permian extinction, somewhere around 252 million years ago. Though it had descendants that um, existed or made it into the Triassic. Possibly Sinognathus itself made it into the Triassic, shortly dying out right afterwards. Um, let's see, where were we? The discovery of Rhytomacampsa, Bacorum partially fills a long ghost lineage extending from the Middle Triassic to the Early Late Triassic. Rhytomacampsa, Bacorum represents the second proterocampsid from the 
Panairo's Chiniqua sequence of Brazil and comprises one of the oldest proto-campsids worldwide. It has a diagnostic set of hind limb traits and is phylogenetically close to Proterocampsa, partially filling a ghost lineage of Proterocampids more closely related to Proterocampsa than to Radosuchini. Yeah, so Radosuchini, um, yeah, I've seen things where now it's been basically um, Proterocampsa is Rado, Radosuchini, so this might still be a bit of a debate or it's the same thing. Um, finally, the co-occurrence of Reticampsa becorum and Pinerocampsa retrogesi. So this is a different species of Pinerocampsa, the um, Pinerocampsa. Provides further support for the idea of high ecomorphological diversity among Proterocampsians in middle to early late Triassic environments. Okay. I'm glad we have found a new species of Proterocampsid within the Santa Maria formation of Brazil. And um, it looks like a very intimidating fish eater. Um, let me know what your favorite species of crocodile-like reptile is in the comments from the Triassic period. There's a wide range of these different types of families. I'd say the Triassic probably hosts the most um, variety in terms of the different crocodilomorph like um, archosauromorphs and then as well as the different types of crocodilomorphs of the Mesozoic era, possibly even into the Cenozoic as well. Um, since many became much rarer in the Cenozoic era, so after 66 million years ago, by about four to what, yeah, about four to five million years ago, they pretty much went extinct. It's very unfortunate. Um, anyway, from prehistoric to present, my name is Ethan. This is Creature Guy Live Daily News. Remember to like, comment, and if you love talking about animals, share this show with everyone you know. You can catch new episodes throughout the day at Creature Guy Live on Rumble and YouTube. And don't forget to catch our animal documentary commentary live stream on Saturdays at 6 p.m. Central on Rumble. Because nothing is better than all animals all the time.